Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Once again, I'm doing another movie review in honor of the late great Wes Craven. It's a film that came out on November 1st, 1991, which surprisingly enough was a box office hit, earning $5.5 million on its weekend and gross up to $31, $347, and $154 million out of a $6 million budget. It's a horror comedy called The People Under the Stairs, a film about a strange family who lives in an old house that actually has a dark secret that's something hidden under their basement. It stars Brandon Quincy Adams, who's been later best known for movies like The Mighty Ducks and The Sandlot. He's also a rapper. Edward McGill, Wendy Robbie from the TV show Twin Peaks, A.J. Langer from a short-lived TV show Drexel's Class, Ben Rames, who later went on to do films like Pulp Fiction and Mission Impossible, Bill Cobbs, who later went on to do films like Demolition Man and as well as The Night of the Museum, you know. Kelly Jo Minter, Sean Raylan, of course, who's been best known for doing that Got Milk commercial, the very first one, that's a, a radio ink contest involving the, the duel uh, between Alan Burr and, and Alexander Hamilton, yeah, which actually has the voice of, of Rob Polson becoming the, the radio DJ. Yeah, and, and Sean Raylan was actually eating a peanut butter sandwich while he runs out of milk while trying to say the correct answer. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, Michael Bay directed that one, as we know it. That that actually earned something too, if you saw that commercial. It's available on YouTube, by the way. You can find it. Because I remember seeing that commercial back in October of 1993. Especially when I was watching the, the Simpsons Halloween marathon at the time. <laughs> so, I never forget that commercial. And Jeremy Roberts. And it's written and directed by Wes Craven. The movie begins somewhere in the ghetto of Los Angeles, California. Leads a young resident of Point Dexter Fort Williams, who's played by Brandon Quincy Adams, who one night was just doing his tarot reading, you know, reading all these cards, including the Fool card, where he and his family are being evicted by their old and very damaged apartment by a strange landlord's the Robinsons, you know, that are nicknamed Daddy and Mommy, you know, Edon Robinson and Mrs. Robinson, both played by Edward McGill and Lenny Robbie. <clears throat> Already their mother is feeling very ill and they're trying to find a better way to save them, you know, from being evicted. So they had Leroy along with his associate Spencer, you know, both played by Ben Rames and Jeremy Roberts. And they hired the uh, fool to sneak in into the Robinsons' household. At first, they had fool dressed up as a scout leader, you know, already selling some cookies to them. That didn't work out. So then they had their second plan by hiring Spencer to be posed as a gas worker. But then the Robinsons decided to leave home shortly, only to find out that Spencer doesn't return. So Fool and Leroy decided to break into the house just trying to find them, only to discover that the whole house is being trapped inside, and they actually brought in their dog uh, Prince, yeah, a very British dog, to attack on Leroy and Fool. But by the time that happened, Fool winds up inside a dungeon-like basement, only to find his dead body of Spencer, yeah, you because know, he's already been eaten from his hand, and and yeah, you can even see the the ring of of a skull, a silver skull. That that's when you discovered a large group of strange pale children who was being locked inside a pen. So then the Robinsons had returned while Leroy and Flo are trying to escape, only to find out that he's being shot dead by Daddy. So then Fool winds up running into another section of the house where he then meets their young daughter, which turned out to be adopted, named Alice, who's played by A.J. Langer. 
She tells them that the people under the stairs were the children who broke the sea, hear, and speak no evil rules that the Robinsons had came up with, and the children had degenerated into cannibalism in order to survive. While Alice is trying to avoid this fate by obeying the rules without any question whatsoever, we then meet a boy named Roach who's played by Sean Whalen, whose tongue was removed you know, after screaming for help. He winds up evading the Robinsons by hiding in the walls. Yeah, which then we, we spotted Daddy, you know, dressed up in, in that black suit of his with the mask. And although sometimes he doesn't do that, but he brings in his trusty shotgun to shoot the entire walls where whenever he hears a lot of noises. So anyway, Fool is already being discovered by Daddy by being thrown into the cannibalistic children to die. However, Roach had helped Fool to escape, only that he's been shot down by his runes, and by Daddy, of course. But then, once he dies, he gives Fool a small bag of gold coins and a written play to save Alice. So then, Fool reunites with Alice, and the two had tried to escape into the patches way between the walls. Daddy, of course, decided to hide Prince into the walls to kill them. The fool tricks Daddy into stabbing Prince and he and Alice had tried to reach up to the attic where they found an open window above the pond. Unfortunately of course Alice was was too afraid to jump and Fool was forced to go without her. But of course he did make a promise he couldn't keep just to return for Alice. So Fool finds out that the gold that he had enough to pay his rent and for his mother's surgery was that Mommy and Daddy are the brothers and sisters coming from a long line of crazy and bred people. Yeah, which uh, Grandpa Booker had explained to the Fool, and he's played by Bill Cobbs. They started out as a family that ran a funeral home selling cheap coffins for expensive prices. So then they got into real estate, making lots of money as they got greedier, and, and not to mention they got so crazy that you know, Fool wants up, you know, trying to stop them from doing all this crap because they were the ones responsible, you know, for for stealing everything that's that they have gotten. So then Fool came back just to save Alice. Yeah, they tried to escape all the way around. They actually went outside on top of the roof of the house and then went in, into the chimney. And I, I remember this this was a scene where when they were trying to get down just to escape from the Robinsons, yeah, suddenly mommy wants up showing up and you know, already with daddy's uh, shotgun down the hall. Yeah, they started throwing all these bricks um, on daddy, yeah, because he's being knocked out. Yeah, mommy was actually trying to go up and to just to kill uh, Alice and, and Fool, and then and Fool actually started taking his two fingers and putting on mommy's nose, and, the, and then he started screaming. <laughs> Never thought I would hear that. So anyway, they, they try to escape. Uh, Daddy, of course, found Fool at the bolt where Fool sets off the explosives. Yeah, there's lots of dynamite all the way around, which demolishes the house and causes the money to blow up through the crematorium chimney into the crowd of people outside. Daddy, of course, was being killed in the explosion, and Alice and Fool reunites in the basement. Yeah, because now he, he feels like a million bucks. But then, meanwhile, the people outside claim that the money distributed by the blast and flee the children benders in the night. And that's when the movie ends. And oh, man, I, I, I really like this movie, too. It's it, it's actually, you know, an interesting horror comedy that uh, Wes Craven was coming up with. And I really enjoyed this movie a lot, too. And it's a very rare one, too, because you actually had a 13-year-old kid who's the hero who can actually kick ass, too. It's hard to believe, but I never thought I would see a kid like uh, Fool actually go around, you know, using the shotgun, actually trying to use the explosives, too, you know, to shoot uh, Daddy. And also, um, you know, try to save Alice and all the cannibalistic kids, uh, from the entire house and basement, from these two crazy people like 
the Robinsons. I know, I mean, and, and they they have to be the most crazy, you know, murderous people I, I've ever saw. Because that's, that's how greedy that they really are. You know, since they did own their funeral home and... And they're just... Oh, boy. <laughs> and they were complete assholes, too. I mean, they started shotting down Leroy, as well as Spencer, and even the... You know, sad to say, uh, you know, Roach. Yeah, he was very good in this movie, too. And sad to say, he gets killed by these guys. I mean, they definitely got what they deserve at the end. After what they did to them. And that's sad. Yeah, not to mention what they did to Alice, too. When they, they started um, abusing her completely. She started scrubbing all that blood coming from Leroy. And then, you know, she even dared to put her inside a hot boiling uh, tub. You know, just to scrub all that blood out from, from her dress. I mean, Jesus Christ. No, no wonder these guys were crazy. Yeah. But they definitely got what they deserve at the end. I mean, Jesus Christ. I was hoping that these guys were going to just fucking die already. But nevertheless... Um, yeah, once again, Brandon Quincy Adams was awesome in the movie. Um, A.J. Langer was very good, too, as Alice. You, know, you definitely feel sorry for her after the way she's been treated by these stupid Robinsons. Um, yeah, the Robinsons themselves were, of course, good. I mean, they, they were just, you know, you know, very greedy and gun-crazy guys who just go around, you know, shooting everybody underneath the walls and just for fun. Yeah. Um, they had a great cast too. I mean, it was great to see Ben Rames in a film, you know, long before Pulp Fiction and Mission Impossible. So, yeah, this is very rare. And, uh, Bill Cobbs, of course, uh, and all the rest. You know, er everybody was good. Definitely pretty rare for, for Wes Craven to come up with. Yeah, seeing that at the time when Los Angeles was really going through a lot of crazy shit over the years. And yes, this was at the time when, you know, the riots came out later on, which it did in 1992, of course, after the Rodney King trials. So you could tell how, how bad it looked over there. But it was a perfect setting for it. But, uh,. Yeah, it, it was very rare. I, I really enjoyed this movie. Yeah. Definitely check it out. So anyway, I give People Under the Stairs four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.